And by ambidex charity, we kind of think of this as being at the intersection of innovation and change. And it's an approach to working with firms to help them manage, incumbent firms, how they can make successful transformations at points of disruption, how they can sort of beat the odds, if you will, uh, and uh, avoid the fate of firms that we know uh, have, have suffered, like Nokia or Blockbuster or whomever. To, as large firms, is do explore and exploit simultaneously, because you've got to be as concerned for your core business, your established franchise, and the revenues and the profits and the margins and everything, and you've got to be concerned with how you explore into the future. Neither of these two disciplines are of themselves unknown. It's the tension that doing them together that is really what becomes a challenge and what many firms uh, struggle to do. And this is the, the reality. It's kind of how do you be consistently inconsistent? Focus in two directions. One direction, discipline, order, don't screw up, drive the profit. And the other one, play, experiment, learn and hold that within the same organizational uh, architecture, the same leadership architecture uh, as the other. So there are firms that I think have done this successfully and can teach us some important lessons. And there were some people from IBM. Uh, I used to be an IBMer. It's where I got started on this as IBM set up its emerging business opportunities from about 2000 onwards and created some billion dollar businesses, really applying this, very deliberately applying this notion of ambidexterity. I think you had Julie Larson Green here yesterday um, and Julie there running Microsoft Office desktop while with a peer simultaneously, uh, Rajesh Jha is uh, then a peer running Microsoft on the cloud two different ways of doing the same thing, two peers, two structurally separate organizations, each with a different mission, all under uh, a single leader. Uh, another example, we'll click up, might be NVIDIA. Right? This is a firm that has made a tremendous leap, still doing graphic processing for computers, while at the same time developing this bold vision of how it can support autonomous driving and deep learning by being the leader in visual computer computing. Again, playing two games simultaneously uh, as it does so. And, and my personal favorite uh, of Elsevier, I didn't know uh, Doric would be here, um, Elsevier figuring out how to continue to be um, the world's largest publisher of scientific journal content and develop workflow solutions to enable scientific discovery. In, and also um, uh, Mendeley, a, a scientific community, uh, and to build uh, science, sort of collaborative science models. So there, there are models that are successful uh, that we've seen uh, in, a, in a bunch of different firms. But the reality is a lot of folks get stuck. So what do you do about this? Well, what we found through uh, Michael's research and our application of this in a, a bunch of different firms, that there's really sort of six different capabilities for ambidexterity uh, which you're looking to uh, develop. And I'm going to just buzz through them very quickly. And my hope is in our breakout, we'll be able to unpack these a little bit more and, and, and get your experience as to how you see some of these problems. And I hope to, to learn from you if possible. Um, so the first set are really to do with your sort of formal processes of innovation. You've got to discover, you've got to ideate, uh, if you will, in, in new areas. You've then got to experiment and incubate new business, and then you've got to scale them, um, be that in a, a, a network sense or in a traditional sense. So there are these sort of formal innovation capabilities which we can talk about. But most of the action in ambidexterity actually sits um, in the next set of parallel capabilities. Firstly, have you got an ambition that is equal to the opportunity that you're seeking to uh, explore? Um, uh, amusingly, in the, in the program, um, uh, my session uh, has my title, and then it says I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence. By now, you figured out that I'm not. Um, but but it, it called to mind uh, a client that I'm working with where um, it's an artificial intelligence unit of a large European bank. And uh, the woman who runs it has been told, just find the least disruptive application of AI, please. Right? Their ambition is not equal right, to the scale of the opportunity. Right? So setting this ambition at a level that actually permits the right kind of exploration uh, is pretty important. So, do is this, so too is this notion of learning. And, um, and, and, and it, it couples very tightly with experimentation. Uh, and what you know, we've learned is that really this whole notion of experimentation is a strongly cultural attribute of a firm, that many firms that have become successful have not learned to 
test uh, their hypotheses about business with data and then to iterate based on those data. Uh, what they tend to do is say, hey, if the opportunity is big enough, let's go spend a lot of money on it. Uh, it's a very different philosophy because I'm a serious businessman. I'm going to spend money on this. As opposed to, hey, I want to spend little bits of money and I want to learn. And so most of the stories of failed innovation that we find ourselves, failed ambidexterity that we find ourselves going into, tends to be where there uh, is this, this gap in terms of the ability to learn. And that gap is represented in the social system, right, with a bunch of leaders who have built them, their careers around uh, the assumptions and, uh, and practices of the past business model. And so unless you are figuring out how to um, attack the social system simultaneously, with the innovation, then you're going to find to, we, we, we see our firms struggle to be able to, uh, to deal with that.